Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about basics of Power Pages and then later section we are going to take how we can integrate Power Automate or Cloud Flows with Power Pages so that we can call any, we can do any custom business operation or any custom actions using Power Automate. So over here, I'm into Microsoft 365.com where I can find my power page application by clicking on this red icon and over here I can click on power pages which will launch the power page portal make.powerpages.microsoft.com so those who are new power pages is a component of the Microsoft power platform itself and it's designed to create secure and scalable web pages and websites without need of any extensive coding so over here we get a home page of our power pages portal and where we can start building our website with copilot we can define our use case or we can start with using start with templates so it will give us few templates for designing our websites and if i click on template it will have options of viewing them in preview so that we can decide better which template would uh, work well for us so over here if I scroll down I can see like there are five different options and we can pick any of them to start with and if I preview this template it will give me a view and as well as desktop view and mobile view I can see how this portal would look like so if I choose this template and I would be given a page where I have to decide if define my site name and as well as this web address so that it can be on which address or the prefix it should be available so i'll just say let's say it's my partner net portal which i want to build out and i over here i'll say my company's name so that i can decide and i'll just say my company's name and pnp just to shortcut of my partner net portal so it accepts this and I can just do a done so that it can start building out my website so I'll wait for a couple of minutes to set it up so it takes around three four minutes to set up your website and once the site is set up you can see the creator name and set up your sign-in page and as well as the connected domain custom domain so this connected custom domain would be a part like when you are ready to go to live but before that we have to edit or make our website ready with the content and as well as what are the business operations or process we want to integrate we have to have that ready so for that i'll just click on edit my partner net portal and i get a pop-up of if i wish to use copilot into my site you can enable or you can try it later so i'm just closing this for now and over here i'm just changing few of the stuff so right now i am on my pages section on to the left and we have multiple menus over here that is related to branding the styling one the data if we want to integrate some data was tables and to have some forms uh, storing some feedback or contact information then we can use this we have this setup so we'll just go one by one before that we'll just add it the site header and I'll just say my site name And you just can upload any of the logo so I just just choose the existing one and over here you can just update anything uh, the content which you wish to have and later on right now we are going to show you we are going to replace everything using this inbuilt website designer but we are going to use this added this page into our Visual Studio code for a better developers perspective so that we can create the html forms or the style based html forms using at, uh, this vs code so over here you can see we have this option of added with vs code and i can click on added vs code to update do the update a bit faster so it opened into the same browser and it will actually ask me to sign in so that it can sync the power platform tools 
So if you are not logged in into VS Code uh, earlier, it will give you a pop-up where you can sign in and it will integrate your account with this VS Code, these pages. So over here, we see this Power Pages workspace, which has this My Site button and portal. And I have all the pages. And if I scroll down, you will see I have this home page, which has this home page en us web page copy and over here you can see i have this welcome to institution name so you can i mean write in your company name or you can just customize whatever content you are looking for to customize so i'll just say welcome and i'll remove this one and i will be using this book now i will actually because we are going to do one integrated operation of cloudflow so i'll just say call my flow though like we are not going to use it in a while we are going to use this uh, later in the section but uh, i'll just say and on click instead of redirecting somewhere i'll just replace this with my just my id so that i can use this id to make some javascript operations so i'll just say call flow button and I'll use, I'll just remove the other button, which I think I would not require. And this is in uh, condition, it's a condition based on user look role. If user role is this, then show this button. Otherwise show this button, we don't need this. I'll just remove it. And we are going to just do a control S, which saves my file. And if I go back to my, this page you will see like you are editing something visual studio code so you have to sync so i'll just click on sync so that my changes can appear up back to the portal so this is how you can keep updating your content or create html pages or modify html into your vs code and keep syncing your website into this designer website builder itself so now you can see after syncing we have this updated flow which we synced into our vs code and once like it's done because that pop-up comes only once but if you update anything into these files you have to go to your website builder and keep on syncing this one so that your content can be synced up so that's how you can update your content over here now quickly moving to the other sections and then we will get to the how to call a power automate from our this uh, website on click of any button or any action so i'll just move to styling so over here we can define the themes of our base portal our website and you can pick the predefined themes or you can build out your color palette based on your branding styles so i'm just moving on just skipping this part and just choosing one in build template for theme and if i go to data section you will find that there are a few uh, associated tables which is this template is required or already added for example this accounts appointment contact feedback these tables are added so if you wish to use them then use it otherwise you can delete it and have your custom table in place which can be further used on your pages or on your forms to collect feedback or any other service information so we will again like cover this in detail but in later section sessions then I'll go to setup. So this setup is critical part where like once your site is ready, then what you can do, what you are allowed to do. So over here in site details, you can see the site details are running configuration. You can just do a run site checker to check all the vulnerabilities or any issues with your website. And you can do a visit security because earlier this visit security was integrated into the site details page itself. But now we have a separate section for it and very crucial one so i'll just keep on going to this setup one go live checklist so once you are ready then you have to like follow this checklist to check like whether your site is properly behaving performance wise security wise and and you have enabled your cdn for a better content serving so that sort of checks would be there we, we can skip it for now and you can just go to the mobile progressive application over here you can see the settings related to mobile configuration. So when enabled, your web app will be published and can be exported as an app package, which can be in turn used to publish your app. And just this background, mobile preview background settings. So I'm just skipping this quickly. 
and over here the integration part which is critical part again is integration with the external apps or crowdflow so in our session as i said uh, this is basically like we'll be adding one crowdflow a new crowdflow and we'll be calling that crowdflow from one of our action button so that how the actual calling would happen and how we can take the response back so that's we are going to see and now i'm just moving to the security part i'll just take this quickly and as any website is must to be defined with the web rules who can access it who can uh, do some certain of operation so that is driven through the security part if i go to this web rules we will find that all the web rules existing in our environment you can create a new web role as well and for now like these three web roles which we are going to work with is administrator authenticated users that means your ad authenticated users and anonymous users if you want to make your site public so these are the web roles which you can use and we can actually very well manage the individual page permissions what all pages should be anonymous should be available for everyone what pages should be uh, permission restricted for some specific sort of uh, role defined users and then we have table permissions which is driven through this data table permission so we can also define this web rules which exist in our website what permission level should have uh, them have on the tables and then web application firewall so once you are ready to go live then you have to do some firewall configurations so that this configuration rules can be applied to this website and the identity providers as we said like what set of people can access your website with what set of authentication or authorization roles so you we have we can define like who should be providing the identity for our website so basically we are going to use azure ad which is enabled by default but as it's a partner portal we can enable the azure active directory b2c where we can integrate the other companies ad uh, for us like to be part of our this website so that those authenticated users into business uh, ad can also access your site so this part also like i'll be taking in one of next sessions how to configure it how to enable it right now leaving skipping for this and then comes the site visibility part where once i'm ready so till the time i'm into development my site would be just private to specific people keep whom i actually want to share my website later on once i'm ready to publish it then i can do this set to public and learn of course like go to this page learn how to protect your site behave well secured like uh, with other context of security methods mechanisms and that's all with the configuration so now um, i we can go back to our pages we can keep on working with our pages design our website so you can very well do that but now i am moving to the next session of integrating our cloud flow and calling or running that executing those cloud flows using any button or call actions onto our website